Let's start the USB mass storage device lab. So I really like this one. We will just create a USB key with our STM32. Um, not a very clever one because when you unpower it, it will erase all the data. But let's see the details after. Just here are the structures of the stack. So um, the organization is always the same. So you can see that on the device class there is much more files than during the VCP hands-on. Here we see some SCSC command. It's important. I will just give you a couple of, of words just after that. Always keep in mind we will work during these labs in the USB storage interfaces here. Quite simple, you will see. The SCSC is ton it's a standard, I will say, just uh, to uh, access file on create mass storage. Not file, sorry, much more on the mass storage. Um, mainly it requires uh, four command, uh, initialization, is it ready, what is the size, and the read and the write. So it's worth five commands, sorry. So on the lower level of the USB, as we already talk, it was using bulk transfer. For the master storage, what we need? We need to ensure that the data is correct, so we need to have some acknowledgement on each exchanges, but we don't have any time constraint. I mean, we want to copy it as fast as possible, but there is no uh, some kind of synchronization needed. So the mass storage mainly used for the USB flash key. I think it's the most known example. And no drivers from Microsoft Windows. So in the example, we use the internal SRAM of our uh, STM32 for the storage. I think now we can launch uh, CubeMX and start these labs. Mm. OK, so. Let's take a new project. Okay, we are on F446 Z and we've got the nuclear one here. Okay, first step. Let's activate the OTG full speed on in device only. You remember we need an external clock to achieve the accuracy of the clock needed for the USB. So in ASCC say we've got a clock sources in bypass mode because it's coming from the ST link on our nucleo. Then it's okay for the clocking for the pinout. Now let's configure the middleware here yeah, just say okay it was a master which places I think that's it let's align the clock configuration now um, here we know it was 8 kilohertz for the HSA and we want to achieve 168 megahertz and let's work cubemix to find what is the proper parameters to to set this configuration so we have got this window on my side. Yes, another clock source. Perfect. So if we go in the configuration, we can have a short look about USB device parameters. Nothing special, max trains. I think we don't have to modify anything there for sure. So it's okay. Let's do the setting of the project on save it. So let's call it uh, MSC device, USB MSC device, USB MSC device. Okay, uh, location is good. We want to work with True Studio, and let's increase the IP to two thousands. Reference is OK, package OK, let's generate.
my PC is a little bit slow. Okay, so now let's launch Atolic. And let's import this project. Existing project, for sure. Okay, we put it in the C. USB training. And USB storage device. Okay. So we got it. Nothing is to change. Just import everything. So, as previously described, we can find again all those files and the SCSC one with a level of abstraction. Um, the core for the signalization for sure. And here yeah, we've got our application with the storage interfaces, as I already told you. Um, here we can find how we'll organize the memory and you've got the different command so the init get capacity to know if it's ready or not the is right protected or not read write and um, uh, max loon uh, loon it was a logical unit so in our case it will be one so now i think we can modify this and create our usb key so the number of logical units it will be one for us here for sure and the block size is uh, 512 so i know that on this uh, device we've got uh, 128 uh, kilobyte of sram so let takes i will say half of this so just 64 kilobytes okay because it was 128 multiplied by the uh, 512 so here it's an augmentation the number of blocks and the size of the blocks so let's create our buffer where we will store all the data locally so as de declared here it will be in the SRAM for sure so the size of it will be the block number multiplied by the size of one block really bad I would say okay so now we can go through the different function storage in it I would say we've got nothing to do here because it's already uh, I would say initialized as it was just in SRAM get capacitance capacity it's already down by the cube generators co-generators is ready it's always ready right protect okay nothing and okay now is a read and the write is the two function that we need to modify so first if we need to read something from our memory we just simply do a copy a mem copy okay and we will do a mem copy from our buffer to this buffer that's coming through the interfaces so just put there the destination of the mem copy then the sources is a buffer um, but we need to find the block address so the block address is a block number so to know in our buffer just we need to multiply it by the size of one block so it will be the bare block address multiply by the storage block size we define at the beginning of, of this file um, and for sure it should be the address of this one now the size we need to copy again this is here sorry I just increase block length is a number of block so here again to know the size to copy we need to multiply it by the storage size um, okay I think should be good for the read so the write would be exactly the same command but we just need to switch the both parameters the first and the second so I'm a little bit lazy I will just use some copy past 
here. Okay. Mm. Let's see if I was able to write it properly or if I missed something. Sorry, my piece is a little bit slow today. Okay, it seems to be good. Good finish properly. So let's download it to the target. So I plug my targets. I'm loaded, and we will switch to the debug view. I launch the code. And now I will plug my um, USB connectors, the bottom one of my Nucleo. And let's see if the Windows detects some mass storage, or I will say flash stick. So I've just plugged it and okay, I've got this pop-up. In fact, uh, the memory is not formatted from Windows point of view, so you would like to know if you can format it. For sure, let's do it. the capacity it was 64 kilobyte as we defined and let's do a quick format should be enough format is completed so now you can see this new volume remove a disk you can create some file in it and we can write inside also So typically we now have um, a USB key. If I unplug it, okay, it disappears. If I plug it again, we can find it again with our file. So good. If I unpower my board and if I plug it again let's wait a little bit okay it's updated if I power it again I still have I should have <laughs> the fact that we need to format and it's come back because everything have been erased as it was in the, the SRAM for sure I would say mainly that it's we created this first USB key with our nucleo so quite simple you can see that just in the interfaces so just imagine that now you are using the external memory or something inside or just uh, put in the flash the things and you've got uh, a USB key okay um, thanks I think that's all for this lapse